basoto blene moshe kambrene moshe kayata da le brene no sto brene kasto brene sto balando bahati sto kambrene sto baba le gebo stali dali dali masto brene mo sombra gadi esto le de bayando ramosh Zable e konda rabaye tembre de nosto bravene ki esto da baba kayando nosto. Yela mo shanda bakaye. Bra e estum bregede sto ramo shanda rabda bo subre de beke beyando. Zatale mo shtale bredeve no subreve ne kombaliyesh. Embregedos to mbranini Rabdobos to brekeyanda de demosa Shile kapandos to breveni Kato yanda rabdobos sababa yemda ribnimos Brene shto do mande brani vazato lodo maka Li imbrini ushto bamba li vaso predi bakayande si Kiyanda roboshaya Le bahas tum de brani me sobre velish to brande behatiando. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Joy that flows from the heart of the Father. Joy that brings forth stability in direction. Insight, peace, and illumination. Sali bayando balish tayando. Le brano sobra de vesen te le brani vele custom brani. La brano sombre di ento le mazu prevene no sto prevene satayando robdabo. Shaliba stombre de stobravene stobravale kabayando e pruno no stombrane ma sombre gezebe in prege stobrevene stobrevene. Come, drink of him tonight. Partake of him tonight. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. All is spirit. All is spirit. Le baba sobra ne mo samba robda bo kaya thala ma sabriye. Embre no sobra vele sobra ne ma kayanda. Ha, Holy Spirit. It's your day. It's your time. It's your season. It's your moment. Reveal Christ to us once again tonight. Show us the Father. Bring us to the place of divine clarity. Bring us to the place of divine knowing. Bring us to the place of the brook. Bring us to the worship. Purify us tonight. Make us holy. Make us worthy. Make us ready. Oh, bring us to the place where we can see all things clearer. Bring us to the place where we can know your heart, your mind, your will, your desire, and your intentions. How we long. Once again, to live a life that honor the Father. How we long to live a life that honor the Son. How we long to live a life that truly is united with you, Holy Spirit. This morning, this evening, we embrace you. We embrace your ways. We embrace your mind. We embrace your will. 
We lay aside every superfluity of nothingness. Oh, we embrace the cross, yes. We embrace the cross tonight because only through the cross can we see the Christ. Bring us in. Bring us in, Holy Spirit. Oh, Come on. Zali brondo boshanda rebdobo librono. Steer yourself up unto godliness. Building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. It is one of the primary ways where we get to know and get to develop and get to interact with our true essence, with our true nature. The gift of speaking in tongues, yes, is for our personal edification, is for our growth. Is for our development. Is for building us. Is for preparing us. Is for aligning us to God's heart, to God's mind, to God's will, to God's desire, to God's intent. Tonight we pray, oh, that we become one with the Spirit. One of the ways that we become one with the Spirit is when we begin to pray the language of the Spirit. It's a place where we get to wait. It's a place where we get to be fine-tuned. The place of praying in the Spirit and with the Spirit is the place where we get to know the voice of the great shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. One easy way, one quick way to hear his voice is to begin to pray in his language. Is to begin to build yourself. Is to begin to edify your spirit man. As you do that, you begin to lay aside every weight, every distraction. You begin to, yes, allow that which is not of God to fall by the wayside. Sali embrono costa velish, tayende balato balim vrene subrediando. Do you know that people's tongues, as they pray in that sense of maturity, can impact your spirit? There's a, there's a communication, there's a cononian, there's an interaction that can take place when you begin to, yes, speak in the language of the spirit. You see, the language of the spirit is not tongue talking, but tongue talking is an expression of the language of the spirit. So when you pray in agreement with the spirit, you will speak his language. Yes, it's a place of union, it's a place of oneness, understanding. When you pray in the spirit, your spirit is praying, and you want to, yes, superimpose that which your spirit is saying and declaring over your mind, over your suke, so that there can be agreement. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you, O oh God, tonight. Thank you, Father, for edification. Edification. We need it. We need to be edified. We need to be built up. That we may have mutual faith. That we may have understanding. Yes, that we may come to the place where wisdom indeed can do his perfect work in us. That we may be built, O oh God, even unto the place of your divine glory and honor. It is in this point and place that the Lord begins to interact with us. It is from this point that the Spirit of God begins to direct us into, yes, the intentions of the Father. It is from this place that the Spirit of God begins to interpret the mind of God to us. When we learn to pray in the Spirit and with the Spirit, when we learn to pray in the Spirit, yes, guided by the Spirit, via the Spirit, we begin to establish the counsels of God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory, friends. I see glory. I hear glory. It's a day of glory. It's a day of newness. 
is a day of newness, is a day of newness, is a day of unity, is a day of oneness, is a day of purification. I feel the presence of God in this place. The washed, be cleansed, be purified. Come to the place of divine harmonization. Come to the place of divine harmonization. Come to the ascended point and place where you see all things the way they ought to be seen. Holy Spirit, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Our Lord is awesome. He's glorious. Friends, tonight I want to welcome you once again to the Porter's Gate online broadcast. This is a platform where we continue to engage our spirit in order to come to that point where we are fully developed and mature in the things of God. We know that the things of God cannot be taken on a face value. We need to grow, we need to mature, we need to develop. And that takes some form of systemic impartation. Nothing of the spirit comes cheap. I guess many in the church assume that the things of God just happen like that. There's a price to pay. There is a price to pay. There is a, fo- there is a sense of focus that is demanded. There's a sense of determination that we must have. There is a sense of continuity that we must have. We have to daily hunger for him. We have to daily yearn for him. In the place of our hunger and thirst and quest after God, the Lord will begin to test us and see how committed we are with little things. As he sees our commitment, he will begin to, yes, expand his his sense of grace and purpose and intentions in our life. We begin to grow. We begin to increase more responsibility are given to us. But if we think that, well, we are just going to engage the things of God based on our own idea, based on our own presumption, or based on some God knows what has been, you know, told us, it's not going to work. We have to understand that in the seasons that we live in, that there is a shift, a shift that is leading us into the next sphere, into the next phase of every prophetic agenda in the earth and that requires that we become we become we become committed we become deliberate in our engagement with the things of the spirit it demands that we understand where we are coming from where they have brought us from where we are right now and what it requires for us to move into the next seasons of god Unfortunately, when God begins to move, people don't see it in the natural. It's not written on the, on, you know, on the face of, of people whether God is moving. If you want to know about the move of God, the things of God, you have to track the spirit of God. You have to track the hunger, the, the quest, and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the passion of individuals that are searching him. Why God is moving within this church corporately. But this corporate, amen, begins from a sense of, you know, individual hunger and quest after the things of the Spirit. God said, Abraham, have I called alone? I mean, God knew that Abraham was married. He said, Abraham, have I called alone? Even though God recognized marriage and he's called us to unity, but when it comes to the issues of passion, when it comes to the issues of hunger, when it comes to the issues of seeking him, friends, he wants to engage us on an individual basis. It is our individual fire, yes, that, 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 that brings that order of a collective sense of his authority and purpose within the ecclesia. Without us being refined individually, there will not be a corporate church with a corporate anointing to bring forth the counsels of God. The next order of prophetic event rests upon our shoulder. And we have to show up. We have to be determined. We have to be ready. 
We have to lay aside whatever it is that we have learned, that we have borrowed, that will not, yes, uh, uh, allow us to, to move further into the new demand of God. We have to hear the clarion call. We have to hear the sound of this new day. And we have to prepare our hearts. I pray that the things that we are talking about, the things that we are teaching, will not be taken on a, on a face value. Will not be taken casually. Will not be taken with levity. But we will continue to look into these things as, you know, as the Bereans. We will continue to, to hear and to seek and to probe and to search until we begin to find the, 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 the very macaw, the very heart of God, even regarding our day. A sense of responsibility must dawn upon us. There's an awakening taking place. But this awakening has begun from a very quiet level. But very soon, it's going to become a thunderous sound. And I don't want you, friends, to be left behind. I don't want you, my disciples, to be left behind. I don't want you, my brothers and my sisters, to be left behind. I want us to become, amen, indeed participators in the things the Spirit of God is saying. Let those who have the ears hear, the scripture says, what the Spirit of God is saying. There is a present proclamation. There's a present declaration. There is a present, yes, emphasis of the Spirit. I miss all the distractions around us. I miss all, yes, the issues taking place all around us. Friends, I want to beg of you again. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's keep our minds focused on Christ. Because there are things the Lord wants to teach us. There are things the Lord wants to infuse in us. It's from these instructions of the Spirit that we will receive, yes, the provision that we need in this journey. It's from the instructions that we receive in the place of focus that will allow us, yes, to find even, yes, uh, uh, the sense of security, food security, provision. The economy of God will be coming to us from the place of divine quietness, from the place of solitude, from the place of trust, from the place where our heart is set on a journey. I want to beg of you tonight, let us teach it. Let the things the Spirit of God is bringing before us, let it not be another joke. Let it not just be another thing that, you know, oh, well, 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 he's down there, I'm here, you know, I can do my... You see, the condition of the heart has always been the instrument that determines how far we go with God. Let's be serious. Let's be determined. Let's be committed. Let's allow the Lord to continue to walk upon our heart. If there's any prayer we need to pray in this season, Lord, circumcise my heart. Circumcise my heart. You know, I perceive that out of these teachings, out of this training, out of this impartation, the Lord is going to be harvesting the people. The Lord is going to be setting a people, yes, aside for his use. You see, in every generation, there is a, there is a yastic, there is a standard that is required for people to, be, to become participators in the, in the things of God. Once that season elapses, once that season elapses, God begins to look for a different order of people that will carry his thing, that will carry his purpose, that will carry his intention. And I, I know, listen friends, in 2020, a season has elapsed. God ushered in a new season. We are in the midst of a training right now for the next thing that is going to be happening in the earth in terms of God's prophetic counsel. Irrespective of what is going on across the world, the rumors of war that we are hearing, the, the battles, the challenges, the war. Listen, the end has not come. The Bible says this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the ends of the earth to all the nations of the earth then the end shall come in fact Matthew 24 told us amen these are just the beginning of the bad pang I don't know if some of you saw you know uh, 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 the post I, I, you know, I, I posted on my Facebook this is a day where God is refining us those who are going through a tribulation. Let me give you a word. Out of, out of the nation of Ukraine and Russia 
and those and those war torn areas of the world will come the finest of instrument that God is going to use in this last day. I was just sitting down in you know, the back the backyard of my house and meditating and the Lord began to speak to me. He says, "Why you want to weep and cry?" For the things that is happening. Why you want to weep and cry against the injustice that is being done to the people in Ukraine. I am raising for myself the end time army. This army will not be the ones that will carry guns. And no, no, no. God, out of the fire, out of the war, out of the suffering, out of the carnage, out of the bombing. A people will emerge. So those who think that they are causing destruction, they don't know that God is going to use the very destruction to awaken a people. We have to begin to align ourselves to the wisdom of God in this season, friends. We have to begin to, you who are sitting at ease in Zion, you need to be careful. If you are at ease in Zion in this season, you need to be very, very careful. You need to be careful. You need to be praying, God, plunge me in the place that will prepare me for the next season of my life. For, the, for your next prophetic intentions in there. Plunge me. Plunge me. I'm not afraid of tribulation. Prepare me. Ah. I pray tonight that you will hear the voice of God. I pray tonight that you will not be afraid. Oh. Oh. For God has not given to us a spirit of fear. Salibriandove. Lembrono masonda brono shianda. Fear brings torment. But God has not given to you the spirit of fear. The reason why David was able to do the things he did is because he had overcome fear. What are you afraid of? What is scaring you? It's time. The Lord is preparing you for something great. You see, what I'm sharing with you tonight via the Spirit is another syllabus. We're doing practical and, the and theory at the same time. And he chooses when the, when the practical will come. I don't know. I just follow his guidance and his leading. I want you to understand as the Spirit of God continue to speak to us about the building, the formation of a prophetic spirit, not just of a prophetic gift. What we are, what we are up to is to develop, is to have for ourselves. Oh, Spirit of God. Friend, I, I feel the presence of God in this place. And I pray that you will receive that same presence wherever you are. It's a connection of heart. It's an attitude thing. I pray that you will feel the burden of God tonight. I pray that you will feel the urgency of the spirit. I pray, oh, that your heart will open tonight to, 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 to receive the things that heaven is bringing before you. Oh, I pray that as you receive those things, that new channels in your spirit will be open to begin to comprehend the new realities of God. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. The new things that God is about to do. Either though we thought that we have seen God and we have known all that we need to know. But the Lord is bringing us to a new height. The Lord is bringing this church to a new pedestal. A new thing is unfolding before our very eyes. And only those who are focused, who are not distracted, will partake of this meal. Come, partake of this new meal that I'm offering you. It will strengthen you. It will give you the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge you need to do my will. Come eat of this meal. Drink of this wine that I have brewed, that I have prepared. An age old wine that I have prepared. I've kept the best for last. In my wisdom, I have prepared this season for you. This is your season. Enter into the chamber. Let me begin to infuse you with my wisdom. 
My wisdom will guide you to the place of knowledge, counsel, and understanding. And I will begin to walk in the reality of that which I have begun to say to you. Yes, I will walk in that reality. You will see my walk. They say, what must we do to do to do the works of God? The works of God is that you believe. That tonight if you begin to have a glimpse, an understanding, an ascended revelation of Christ. Ah, that you begin to partake of the things that is happening among the elders who sit before the throne. They are there to show you things that they have done in their time. Come up higher. Leave the weights behind. Come up higher. Leave the burdens of yesterday behind. See the things that I am doing. Draw from me. Learn from me. Partake of me. Friends, There's so much the Lord is doing. But I'm afraid to say very few, very few, very few today are being drawn to the things that God is doing. It's like in the days where the, the banquet was thrown and an invitation was sent out. Go call those who are worthy to come. But they trivialize the invitation. There's an invitation going on right now. There's an invitation the Lord is sending out. Hallelujah. There's an invitation the Lord is sending out. There's an invitation that the Lord is sending out. Go. Go. And call those who are worthy to come into this new thing that I'm doing. Go. The Bible says the master of the banquet sent his servants. He said, Go. Go call my friends. Go call. Go call them. I'm doing something new. There's a marriage taking place. My daughter is getting married. Come. He invited them. Just like in the days of, of, Queen, uh, of Queen Esther. Vashti. Andoroboshiando. Something new is happening. There's a fresh invitation to look again into this thing we call the Ecclesia. There's a fresh invitation to come again to understand what the body of Christ is all about. There is a fresh invitation again to come to the place of ascendance to see Christ from his ascended realm. Many of us knew him while he walked on earth but we have no understanding of who he is while he's seated at the right hand of the Father. There is a new priesthood that has been ushered. Familiarity is what is going to kill the church. God have mercy. God have mercy on me. I don't want to assume. I don't want to presume. I don't want to say that I've been this, through this path before. You know, many things look alike. Have you ever been to certain place that look like a place you've been before? Have you ever met people that look like somebody you know? The 
the look alike is what is going to deceive us in this last day there's an invitation to come and know him anew there's an invitation to know Isaiah Phillips anew there's an invitation to know Tina anew there's an invitation to know Nkumisa anew there's an invitation. The past, that person you thought you knew. That brother, that sister you thought you knew. You're still judging them. From the old order. From the old mindset. From the old position. From the old relationship you had with them. Ah, you're going to be a default. When Jesus resurrected. His own disciple could not recognize him. Huh. Friends, this is not me speaking because I never planned what I was saying. I've got my note open before, before me. But obviously the Lord is saying something to somebody tonight. Of course I know he's speaking to me. Look again. Look again. You see, those who thought they knew you are going to be having the greatest mistake of their life. They will be making the biggest mistake of their life because they thought they knew you because you still wear the same future. But something has happened. Something has taken place. You are not the same person. I am not the same person you thought you knew. Familiarity will hinder us from entering into the new because we think, oh well, I've heard that before. I've seen that before. Is this not? Why was he talking about the prophetic? In fact, I am I'm a master. I, I study all of this. What? what? Henceforth know he no man after the flesh. We used to know Jesus after the flesh. Henceforth know he no man after the flesh. If our knowledge of the things of God is not increasing, it's not up, being updated on a regular basis, we will miss God even in our season. There are so many things happening right now that is locking our mind to one pattern of thinking that is that is seducing our sight to one order of life. If we're not careful, if we're not going back, if we're not seeking to be washed again, if we're not coming to the river, to the stream and say, God, touch my sight. Help me to see again. You will choose wrongly. Even in the prophetic, we can make the biggest mistake. In fact, we've seen it through the scripture. The prophets don't always get it right. You see, because the prophetic is more of the heart of God than the eyes of God. The prophetic is more about the heart of God than the eyes of God. Many people want to see what their heart is not beating after. Seek his heart. And his face will glow. Seek his heart. And his face will shine. Friends, there's a call to go back and seek him again. I know many people are tired. Tired because they've been disappointed by the presentation of man. By the false representations of man. But the Lord never called us to follow man. He 
says, follow me. He says, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. That's what he said. Not follow men. You see, when we follow men, we get disappointed. He said, are we not supposed to follow men? Of course we are supposed to follow men who are followers of him. He said, if you will seek me, not men, if you will seek me diligently with all your heart, you will find me. Not find them. Not find it. Not find something else. You see, the prophetic is about a person. It's Christ. It's not about a gift. It's not about a gift. It's not about a miracle. It's not about signs and wonders. It's about Christ. Come up higher. And let me show you. All that they showed John on the Isles of Patmos. Is about the revelation of one man. One person. Christ. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And we are complete in him. You see, you're complete in Christ. You're complete in Him. And He will never lead you astray. He will lead you to people that will build you. He will lead you to people that will train you in love. You see, the chastisement of God comes with love. Not a place where you have been abused. Where you have been misused. Where people have used gift to flog you. This is the reason why people today don't want to have anything to do with the things of God. Particularly when it comes to the prophetic. And this is the reason why God says, Isaiah, you need to go and teach my people. Tell my people what the prophetic is all about. Is a nature you have in Christ. And that nature must grow. Must develop. Must come of age. You see. In no time. My son Zadok. Is nine months. Nine, nine, eight months. Is going to be nine months. In, in few few months. He will start speaking. He's already speaking, you know, doing his own thing. You see, the things that we're running after, we're running after. You know, the gift, I want to know how to prophesy. No, it will flow. It's natural for the child to speak. It is natural for you to prophesy. It is natural for you to work miracles. The Bible says miracles are the children's bread. It is natural for you to see visions and dream dreams. It is natural. It is natural. But that naturality depends on who parents you, on who feeds you, on what you're feeding on. Hey, friends, I bring you before the tree of life. I've not come with fables. I've not come with enticing words of men's wisdom. I've come to tell you that if you will follow the leading of the Spirit back to the place called the delight of God, Eden, and you're able to locate the tree of life, you will reflect 
who you truly are in Christ. Come, let me lead you back to the garden. Follow me. Let's go back to Eden. The place of his delight. You are his delight. He said, come, go invite them. I want to take them back to Eden. I want to bring them to the place of newness. I want to bring them to the place of oneness. They are my friends. Go invite them. But alas, they all gave excuses why they cannot come. The church cannot remain the way it is and be able to fulfill God's prophetic intention for this season. The church cannot remain where she is right now and fulfill God's divine counsel for this generation. It's impossible. We have to hear, we have to listen and hearken to the invitation to come again. There are new things he wants to reveal. There are new directions he wants to give to us. Oh, there are things he wants to correct. There are things he wants to chisel out of our life. Somebody's asking for prayer. Kim Kelly. Father, I pray for Kim Kelly right now. In the name of Jesus. Renewal, renewal, renewal. Restoration. This restoration is back to your first love. The Lord says return back to your first love. And every other thing will fall in their rightful place. When you begin to make me your priority. When you begin to make me, the Lord says, your priority God says, I will prioritize those things that seem, that look unsurmountable. There's a word for you. Return to the Lord. Let his heart become your pursuit. Let his heart become your desire. Let your heart be filled afresh Remove the veneer. Begin to seek God, your Father, afresh and new. And the lost acts will be found. I just picked that in my spirit. The, the lost acts, you know, will be found. There's an axe that you've lost. When you begin to seek the Lord, the Bible says, the Lord says you will find it. As a word for you. Lord, I pray for my dear brother Desmond tonight. His heart is searching, his yearning, his longing. Ever since I, I've known him, he's been searching and seeking. Lord, bring him to rest. Bring him to quietness. Bring him to the place of nourishing. A place where Yes, he can sit and be fed. Yes. Not with the fattenings of your house, but with meat. The fat belongs to God. Grant him, O oh God, this day a new sense of ascended vision. Bring him, Lord, to the, to the new reality of your heart desire and heart beat. That, Lord, you will begin to steer within him, yes. 
that sense of identity in regards to his prophetic mandate open unto him your word in a new way that as he desire to teach your word oh God I pray oh God in that teachable spirit that he has oh God father that he will become indeed a vessel that can teach men the ways of your kingdom infuse in him today the, 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 the spirit of the priesthood like Ezra as he seeks to rebuild the altar of his household oh God may your will and counsel bring him to the place of strength of honor name of Jesus yes father I pray for my dear sister Mary thank you father that as she has been following this platform for the past few weeks um, maybe months now it's something she's searching for she's longing for she desire to connect with and I know it's genuine I pray, Spirit of God, that there will be indeed an impartation into a life of the grace, of the truth, of the love, of the mercy, O oh God, that resident upon this platform called Potter's Gate, that our life indeed will become indeed a portal and a gate to access the things of your kingdom. Ah, that you will lift up to a new realm, to an ascended position of strength, wisdom, and grace. Indeed, one to carry the shield and the sword. Yes. To pray effectively, even as you have called her into that intercessory environment. As our heart longs for the nations to see your will and counsel. Yes, to be established. I pray in the name of Jesus. Ah, that you will grant her, oh God, yes, the wisdom, yes, the grace to walk within the will. Within the will of your will. I pray in Jesus' name that there will be a drop of your oil upon that rough area that rusty aspect of our prayer life all you need tonight is a drop of that oil let the friction yes karababa become a thing of the past lebron de sebre ya davelidus kumbre de bayam talibrani veya shoyande in the name of jesus minister life to you my dear sister grace to you strength to you wisdom to you understanding in the name of jesus receiving Jesus name a new sight elevated sight elevated sight a new voice a new level of impartation in the name of Jesus Lord I pray for my dear sister Ambrano sobreveyada Thank you, Jesus. My dear sister, Priscilla. In the name of Jesus. This is not a day to be afraid. And it's not a day to hide. You've hide enough you've been afraid enough the Lord is removing the garment of ashes and is placing upon you beauty beauty is a manifestation of the glory of God and is a reflection of a ministry beauty is a ministry I proclaim that today upon you that everything that has reflected shame and pain and ashes they are turned it turned your ashes to beauty 
let the inner beauty the beauty of a virtuous woman that causes her husband to be praised at the gate the woman made the man to be praised at the gate that today there's an alignment an agreement and understanding as the garment of the old is removed and as you wear yes this garment of beauty is the adorning of the hearts they say it's not the adorning of some bracelets or some you know physical attire but it's a beauty that reflects from the inside God says my glory is that beauty as you seek it as you connect to it as you walk in it you will begin to radiate the beauty of God the beauty of God it is that beauty that gives you the confidence that you need <laughs> I see confidence coming upon you again timidity is gone timidity is gone fear is gone insecurity is gone dysfunctionality a teen of the past I proclaim newness upon you my dear sister newness new day new start sit at the table sit at the table and let the Lord minister to you let him show you things things about yourself that you do not know things about your life that you do not know a new person is coming yeah I'm speaking to you I'm speaking to you Priscilla acceleration acceleration you see a day before the Lord is like a thousand years as you sit at the table as he speaks and direct your heart to the new chapters of your life and show you the things yes the table is a place of instruction it's not just a place for food it's a place where you'll be instructed he will be speaking to you face to face in that place of instruction as you receive them you will accelerate ah here's the word as Elijah outrun the chariot of Ahab you will outrun issues of your past and you will catch up with the God of Israel you will catch up with the God of Jezreel. I see the formation of the cloud. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, well. There's an anointing to, to prophesy, to look into people's life, to look into their condition tonight and just give them a word. Well, I never planned this. <laughs> you know I don't do this. This is by the guidance and the leading of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for my dear sister. If you can connect tonight, maybe there will be a word for you. Thank you, Father, for my dear sister and Kumisa. Strength, I hear. Strength. 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 I am your strength. I am your strength. I am your strength and I am your great reward. Follow me. Follow me. I am your strength. I will take that which is defined as weakness in you and I will infuse it with my strength. I will impart it with my strength. I will infuse you with my strength. I will guide you in my strength. I will bring you to the place of strength. 
You know, strength to God means many things. Strength to God means so many things. Strength is wisdom. Strength is knowledge. Strength is understanding. Strength is financial provision. Strength could also be what you need as the image of a woman that God is shaping and fashioning to become an arrow in his hand. Strength is when you put your complete trust in him and not look back and continue to move on even when the odds are against you strength 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 thank you father thank you lord for my dear sister tina thank you father for a new chapter a new chapter in our life, a new chapter for our life, a new chapter that you are, yes, opening now. You're writing new things there. Things that pertains to, yes, your intentions and counsel for our life. Oh, bring her to the place where she begins to see these things. Open her eyes of understanding to see these things so she can partner with you. So she can partner with you in these things that you're writing. Yes. You've inscribed, yes, this, this next life, this next chapter of our life, yes, in this, in this book, book of remembrance. I pray, Lord, that she will remember the things that you are inscribing upon the tablet of our hearts, that our life, O oh God, will become indeed a reflection of this newness, of this new day. That she will walk in the reality of the new, not of the old, but of the new. Thank you, Father. Glory. Glory. Oh well, I'm just reading the thing she posted here. I never even saw it, but here's what she posted. What a confirmation. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and a stream in the wilderness. Well, that's a word for you. God steered your heart to put that word, but that was a word for you. I never saw this word. Just when I finished praying for you, I saw this. Because I was scrolling up. Amazing God. Amazing God. I'm just scrolling up to see where, where else is there. Father, we bless your name. We praise you. Who has decreed a thing that the Lord has not spoken? And who can speak what the Lord has not decreed? We honor you, O God. What a day. My plan was to continue on this. But the Lord has this in mind. Lord, we rejoice in you tonight. We celebrate you from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun. We proclaim Yahweh, you are worthy. None like you. Oh, may your glory, the knowledge of your glory, fill the earth. The earth of our life. May we become indeed a resounding testimony 
of the new things that is springing forth in this new day. We rejoice in you. Our vision is becoming clearer. It's becoming more clearer. Clearer than yesterday. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the way you have breathed upon us tonight. Thank you for the things that you have infused into our spirit man. Thank you, Father, for the things that you have removed, the things that you have replaced. We honor you. We glorify you. Thank you, Father, for everyone watching out there who are just watching on Lucas. I pray, oh God, that this anointing will, will hit them, will touch them, oh God. <laughs> You're not a respecter of man. Those who cannot jump into this pool who feel that they've been in their condition for too long. That when you ask them, would you want to be healed? They don't know what to say. I pray, Lord, that you will touch those people. I pray, Lord, that you will renew, oh God, their vision. I pray that their faith will be steered in the name of Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name that those who have lost their passion for you, oh Father, you will revive those who have lost their way in the transition you will relocate it look relocate them on the path yes in the name of jesus those who believe that they cannot be restored again oh god that your redemptive power will touch them and bring them back in the name of jesus i pray father those who are wounded tonight will receive Yes, the healing touch of God in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus right now that if you are wounded by the church, by your spouse, colleagues, friend, or even by your nation, I pray right now that heaven will touch you. Will touch you. Be healed. When you are healed, the peace of God is restored back. The joy of God is restored back into your life. Your passion is restored back. That's how you know you're healed. When you are healed, you will be able to walk in forgiveness. The reason why people cannot forgive is because they are not healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed from everything that has held you back. Let the chain of darkness... The chain of darkness fall. Fall from your hand. Fall from your heart. In the name of Jesus. Let darkness and blindness become a thing of the past in your life. I proclaim upon you tonight. Christ heal you. Christ heal you. Christ restore you. Christ renew you. Christ revive you. By the reason of the anointing. Every yoke in your life. Spiritual yoke, mental yoke, physical yoke, yes, emotional yoke, financial yoke in Jesus' name, they are shattered. Be restored. Be restored. Let the joy of God, the joy of the Lord, let it be your strength in Jesus' name. Let the joy of Christ be your strength tonight in Jesus name if you're watching me stretch your hand let's have a contact tonight saying Jesus name I am healed I am restored I am renewed I am revived I am transformed I am redeemed I am empowered I am not disempowered Christ is my God say it loud Christ is my God he's my king he's my savior and he heals me tonight Say it with me. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Receive once again a passion for God, for his word, for prayer, for his presence. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we love you. Father, we love you. We praise you. Thank you once again. For restoring compassion to the body of Christ. 
Help us to be, yes, our brother's keeper. Help us to be our brother's keeper. In the name of Jesus, help us to be our brother's keeper. Help us to love, yes, the way you love. Help us to express your love. Your love is something that must happen to us. I pray tonight in Jesus' name. Ministers that are wounded, broken, shattered. Ah, yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Yes, we do that. Ministers, you're watching. If you're a minister of the gospel, you're watching me. Thank you. There's an anointing now for you. Thank you, Father. Yes. Yes, Lord. I pray for your servants, O oh God. I lift them up wherever they are. Wherever they will be watching or listening to this broadcast from. Those who are in, at the forefront of ministry, in the fivefold ministry. Many have been disorientated, confused, shattered. 2020 has destabilized a lot of people. Yes, we needed it so that we can be restored back to the way of the cross. But if you're in that situation and you have not realigned yourself, you have not come back to the Lord, you still think, well, something has been taken from you. No, let it go. Let it go. God has called us, yes, to come afresh, to come anew. He has invited us. He's invited you to come to the banqueting table. There's a wine he's kept. They say you've kept the best wine for last. You thought what you lost was the best. No. The best is yet to come. And I want to tell you right now, let go of that thing you called ministry. You called it ministry. You founded it. You established it. You were the one feeding that thing. But God says, sorry, I will not be part of that. So I will judge it. That which God has judged is judged. Come. 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 And surrender. Say, Lord, I surrender. I was building something for myself. But I surrender. I was trying to make a name for myself. But I surrender. I was trying to impress somebody. I surrender. Free me, O oh God, from insecurity. Deliver me from neediness. Help me to stop using your gift. come to you I come back to you my first love I rather have you and be satisfied than to have the entire world and not find fulfillment and so I return to you I return to you my stronghold I return to you my lover yes I come back to the place of relationship that time I used to spend with you in prayer in tears when my heart swells and I feel your, your arms around me I return back to that place the song says give me Jesus Give me Jesus. You can, you can have all this world. You know, back in the days when we sing that song, I could remember a man of God used to say, no, I don't, I don't just want Jesus. I want the entire world too. And that's, that made sense. But as I grew in the Lord, I, I began to realize that that was a seductive spirit ministering to that man of God. And he lost it all. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. But just give me Jesus. 
You see, that's a song of wisdom. Of recent, I find myself singing that song. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. It's enough for me. Because if you have Jesus, you have everything. If you have Jesus, you have it all. It is Jesus plus. It is never Jesus minus. You see, I've always believed the best of me is yet to come. I've always believed that the best of me is yet to come. And I want to say to you tonight, the best of your anointing, the best of your sermon, the best of your message, the best of your business is yet to come. But first, seek the kingdom of God first you cannot seek a kingdom without loving the king in the kingdom many of us who talk kingdom but we have no relationship with the king that's why our messages are dry. That's why our messages seem to have lost the life, the authority, the power. Give me Jesus. It's not a foolish song. There's so much wisdom in that song. People who sing such a song, are, their heart are set on a journey. They are looking for a city with foundations. A city whose builder and maker is God. The Bible says, God is not ashamed of them. Jesus. Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brethren thank you Lord help us Father to continually live in this atmosphere of the right perspective May we not lose perspective in the midst of all of the things happening around us. May we keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I pray for all our brethren, those suffering, struggling, in need, whatever they may be going through, we pray Christ. You are their hope. You are their strength. Wherever they may be, in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, in America, wherever they may be, we pray strength upon the church, upon the body of Christ. We pray grace. We pray Jesus Christ. Feel your people. Fill them with life. Fill them with hope. Fill them with grace. Fill them with truth. Fill them with your compassion to rise above their need, above their challenges in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. The Lord is coming into your life as you desire him. Kim Kelly, as you desire, amen. Jesus to come into your life. He will come. He's coming. He's coming. 
Jesus minister yes to this vessel you've got a purpose you've got a plan for our life in the name of Jesus let your will and counsel yes be steered today in our life let this day become the beginning of newness of new new journey to us the place of fulfillment in the name of Jesus redemption is yours as you open your mouth and proclaim him to come he comes he said behold I stand at the door I knock if anyone will open he will come in he will come in he's coming he has come in let every other thing that is not Christ that is not of Christ begin to give way out of your life let today become a turnaround a turnaround towards the place of your prophetic purpose of your divine calling and intention may Christ perfect his will in your life yes if you will seek him diligently with all your heart you will find him he is not far that it cannot be found is nearer to you than the breath that you breathe Holy Spirit perfect your walk in the life of your damsel let your name be glorified let your will become established today and forever all glory friends I want to give glory and praise to God just continue in this atmosphere he, he created the atmosphere we just glide in that which the spirit of God desire and we thank God tonight by God's grace hopefully tomorrow we'll continue on what we're supposed to be you know looking at tonight I believe that we fulfill God's divine intention for tonight. I believe that somebody has been touched of the Lord. I believe that a life has been turned around. I believe that God, amen, has come into somebody's life, into somebody's space. I believe tonight that ah, religion has come to an end. A relationship has been born. May God perfect what he's begun in your life lay aside every distraction take time to pray tonight before you go to bed listen to this message again it's, it's, it's there for you to listen to listen to it again get refreshed, get, get renewed get reborn and accept the invitation if this word has been a blessing to you, why don't you share with somebody? Share the link with somebody. Let people know that God is doing a new thing. We just need to be at the right place. There are all kinds of sound out there. But there is one sound that is directing us, leading us to the place of heaven's divine intention. Let's continue to listen. Let's continue to follow. Let's continue to honor God. He said, those who honor me, I will honor. Those who disdain me, I will disdain, I will reject. Let's continue to honor him. Oh, Father, we love you. Isn't that a beautiful thing to say? Father, we love you. We adore you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. Your throne, oh God, is forever. The scepter of your kingdom is righteousness, is justice. You've loved righteousness from the beginning of time. Father, we praise your name. Oh, known are, known are your ways before the foundations of the earth. Thank you, Father, for every life that you have ministered to tonight through your spirit. 
Thank you, Lord, for the things that you have done in my own life in, on this platform. May this ministry, the Potter's Gate, continue to remain a sound, a voice for your glory, to your glory. Lord, perfect all that needs to be perfected. You know my heart desire for this walk. Thank you for your blessing. Because I know if we can touch your heart, you will touch the heart of men to meet our needs. So I bless you tonight for all that you have done. Honor and glory to you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord, for new ministries being awakened. Thank you, Father, for, yes, seeds sprouting forth, bringing forth, coming forth. Hallelujah. It's not dead. I just speak that word in my, my spirit now. The seed is not dead. It's been planted for a long time, but nothing happened. The Lord is watering it now. The seed is not dead. Thank you, Father. Honor and glory. Well, I've come to the end of this broadcast. I wish I should continue, but we have to stop now. Thank you, everyone. Yes. It's a day of glory. Glory to God. More strength. Amen. Thank you so very much, my dear sister. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Desmond. Hallelujah. Thank you, my dear sister Tina. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God. Thank God for your life. Thank God for the things God has done in your life. Uh, uh, Kim Kelly, God bless you. We really appreciate God for this. Our God is faithful. Yes, he's faithful. We give glory to God. Faithful Father. Jesus, the Lord has done great things tonight in the life of people. The Lord has done great things. Amen. Amen. Give me Jesus. I'm just so excited for, you know, the, the deposit of the Lord tonight in, in, our, in our midst. It's just so exciting. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We bless God for what God has done. By God's grace, hope to see you again tomorrow. Amen. Uh, yeah. Thank you so very much. God bless you, my dear sister uh, 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 Priscilla got to change this name. Amen. Praise God. Well, love every one of you and those who were not able to, you know, share a comment wherever you are. Appreciate you. Love you so very much. We pray that God will continue to steer our heart with his fire. May your altar not lack fire. May continue to burn daily. May the Lord perfect what he has begun in your life. Have yourself a wonderful and a blessed evening. God bless you. Bye-bye.